with all that out of the way, recording start, music is on, Just join the stream if you want, um, and I'll get started. Once again, we return to this darkness and shrouded domain where neither star nor the sun's gentle rays offer their warming light. This is the Underdark. A hidden world beneath the bustling lands of the Forgotten Realms where the skies are but a cold, unyielding vault of stone. And the walls display only the grey visage of death lit by the feeble glimmer of torches carried by those who dare descend. This is no place for them. Those who intrude without welcome into these forsaken depths seldom find their ways back, and those who do return to the light above are forever changed. Here, silence reigns absolute. A silence heavy with dread, the stillness of a predator, poised strike, oft the only sound to break this stillness in is the distant echoing drip of water like the beating heart of some slumbering beast slipping through the silent stones of the dark frigid pools below what lies beneath the still obsidian surface of these pools one can only ponder what secrets lie in wait for the brave what horrors for the unwise only the imagination may reveal until the silence is broken this is the Underdark, an abode and home to some of you, a fathomless tomb to the rest. From the depths below, a new threat stirs. As allies of the Society of Brilliance, thou art well versed in the tales, tales of a once proud colony of mind flayers, once a bastion of intellect and arcane might, now poisoned by a vile and insidious force. The illithid hive of Syrog hath succumbed to the malevolent influence of Orcus, the demon prince of undead. His wicked touch hath tainted the elder brain that once ruled the colony, transforming it into a vessel for Orcus and his foul will. In times long past, Syrog was a sanctuary of grand ambitions and scholarly endeavors. Mind flares, nurturing a shadowy empire of psionic power and forbidden uh, knowledge. But now, the very core of this ancient hive beats with a corrupted rhythm, the death knell heralding the collapse of its former glory. You were summoned to this forsaken stronghold by the desperate pleas of the few who yet cling to the Santi in the abyss. Thy mission is clear. Descend into the heart of Syrog, confront the tainted elder brain, and break Orcus's vile grasp upon this cursed hive. Alas, though you proceeded forth with courage and resolve, both thou and thine companions met defeat at the hand of Syrog's Cy dread defenses. Thy final fading re recollections are of monstrous aberrations descending upon thee, their tentacles coiling in a paralyzing grasp that assailed both mind and body with a wave of psionic force. And so thou finds that thyself captive, imprisoned in these great glass vats suspended within a thick, transparent brine. These alien beings who now hold the prisoner have seen to thy wounds healed and bodies restored, all the while studying thee with cold, calculating precision. Unless thou canst escape these bonds, thou art fated to become a thrall thy mind enslaved by the mind flayers to further the nefarious grand design, or worse still, thy fate may lie upon the dissection tables, destined to be torn asunder limb by limb, thy brain extracted to birth the very abominations thou dost seek to vanquish. As you swim suspended within this viscous jelly, numbed but conscious enough to inspect your immediate surroundings, you find your companions nearby. One by one, let's introduce our characters, starting with our newest member, Gizmo. Jeff, go ahead and uh, tell us what we see when we look at your character. Well, what you are seeing at the moment is a terrified 
all but naked rock gnome named Gizmo Gadgetoni. And Gizmo is uh, quite embarrassed to, to be suspended in this vat um, in naught but his undergarments. Uh, he does not know the others in this group and is therefore suspicious of everyone. However, these tentacled keepers are his true uh, enemy and foe. Should I go into actual background on him or? Just what we just... see, just the physical first and we'll have time to discuss background later. Very good. All right, excellent. Uh, a brief um, recollection from everybody, starting with Ivan next, of what we see when we look upon your characters. Okay, you see a great dwarf and dwarf. Uh, you see he has plenty of tattoos on his face. So in his naked body, you see a giant root. Uh, for you familiar with giants, it's a cloud room. Uh, you see he has a braided beard, braided hair. Um, yeah, he's not carrying any weapons on him. Uh, from time to time, when you look at him, you hear whispers. But that's Durak, still shadow. Durak, still shadow. The Duegger are surrounded by these spirit operations that blink in and out of vision now and then. Ethereal blurs in the air. Lies spent in this vat. The last you can recollect being dragged into this vat and placed within it is your equipment, your weapons, your armor, your defenses being placed in a chest across this chamber. This artilogenous chest made of flesh that you can still see from across the vat. Next, we have then Nick's character. Go ahead. Um, I am also playing a Dwegar named Bazarok Goldfang. As you see, Dwegar like um, characteristics: long white silvery hair, beard, a well kept long mustache. But you start to notice as he twitches in the vat, as he wakens and his eyes close, and he bites and grits his teeth. You see that he has two gold um, canine-like teeth, um, short, stout muscular and you can see almost like a little bit of like a like a beast behind the eyes something lurks deep within him but unsure of what um stands at four foot eight that's about it floats to four foot eight yeah um <laughs> sounds excellent and last but not least we have then megan's character that's about zin so you see Zin Zin is a very small in stature, only about two and a half feet tall. Um, a deep gnome, so dark blue indigo skin, uh, elderly. Um, but now that he's been disrobed, you can actually see that below all of what would have been, well, for you, you don't know what his clothing, but he's actually pretty muscular. And you're like, what? He's like muscular but agile, like runner body kind of thing. <laughs> um, and um, every now and again, even though he's been disrobed, you see every now and again like this as like a stray mushroom, just kind of like attached to like his arm, leg, or something. And he's just kind of sleeping soundly at this point. He's just like, yeah, I'm good. Flying suspended in this synthetic bliss. Brought to you by the Illithid construct that surrounds you. You look about. As the darkness of your confines weighs heavily on your minds, an unexpected presence intrudes, a cold, calculating intelligence, but one that exudes a controlled ambition rather than the mindless malice you've come to fear. The voice that echoes in your thoughts is poised measured and brimming with a sinister eloquence greetings beleaguered strangers i am tubulox you sense 
uh, intrigue laced in these words as the presence continues to prod uh, at your thoughts, at your mind. Cyrog may have subdued you for a time, but I see potential in your continued existence. Potential that could serve both our ends. You will soon be liberated from this lamentable predicament, says the voice. The presence lingers, allowing you to absorb the weight of its words. Then, with a deliberate retreat, the influence fades, leaving behind an unnerving sense of anticipation. Moments later, the chamber around you begins to resonate with a low, thrumming hum. The very air seems to quiver as energy surges through the machinery surrounding you. Suddenly, the liquid in the vats begins to churn violently as the containment systems strain under the overload. Bright arcs of psionic energy dance erratically through the air like capricious lightning bolts searching for a target. The glass vats shudder, fracture, spreading rapidly across the surface until, with a final explosive release, they shatter altogether. You collapse onto the cold, slimy floor, gasping for breaths as the viscous brine pools around you. And the voice returns. Ah, the sweet cacophony of freedom. The voice purrs within your minds, now tinged with a subtle amusement. It is not without irony that I, an Ulitharid of Cyrock, am the instrument of your release. But do not mistake this for altruism. My motives are far from magnanimous. You see... I have no love for Cyrog in its current corrupted state, nor for the foul influence of Orcus. My feelings toward them are pure vitriol, and it is though and through your efforts that I intend to see them undone. In the corner of the chamber, your equipment lies within a container nearby. Time seems to slow down as adrenaline kicks in. Some uh, of your memories return to you from the fugue. Uh, some of your equipment has been brought out and you can see it laid upon a table, meticulously arranged as though it had been studied in detail. And the energy surging throughout the room flickers, but Tubilox's presence lingers in your minds, urging you to act quickly. Retrieve your belongings with haste. The time for deliberation has passed, and the forces of Cyrus will soon descend upon this chamber. Your entrance, while bold, was quite perfunctory. It is surprising. The Hive has not yet fully mobilized against you. Perhaps they underestimated your worth, but I digress. Your escape is now paramount. Time begins to speed up again, as you see... From the entrance of the chamber, uh, the, cha the entrance and this episode opens up like a camera aperture, and you hear echoes of intellect devour skittering through the corridor. Tubulux's voice sharpens, his tone brooking no hesitation. Fight your way to freedom, and remember this is but a prelude to the greatest symphony of chaos I intend to orchestrate. We shall meet again, should you prove yourself worthy. For now, know that the fate of Cyrog and the prospect of my ascension rest upon your shoulders as much as mine. Consider this your first true test in this capricious dance of power. And with those final words, the telepathic connection snaps, leaving you alone in the chamber, uh, exposed to the imminent dangers of the Hive, the battle for your freedom, and the uncertain future of Cyrog has begun in earnest. You each get one action before we roll initiative. What would you like to do? <laughs> That's a lot of big words you used, and I don't understand half of them. <coughs> um, I'm... Dude, I'm going at it. I'm fucking pissed. Um, trying to show me up like that from the last session, and just getting absolutely stunned to death. Um... 
I'm going to go with my bestial instincts, and I'm just going to charge forward as my action. Remember that while you're still wearing... Oh, those are, you guys you guys flavored yourself as naked. I was going to have you guys keep your armor. So oh, I would say... Uh, armor? <laughs> you're 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 are stripped down to your best yourself, relying on your lycanthrope gifts to protect yourself, and your weapons are laid on the table near this chest over yonder. So as you charge forth, you charge by that. We have then the three other party members. What would you like to do? Gizmo is going to uh from from his position on his hands and knees and it's the viscous fluids gonna quickly look left look right look up across at his companion clank across the room and yell clank fetch my items fetch my clothing first my clothing and then he's gonna race over and pick up um assuming it's on the table his mm -hmm. uh his uh big daddy steam powered warhammer Sounds excellent. As you rush over, you hear the boot-up sequence of your construct as he powers up and you can hear the steam go through the pipes, uh, filling him with resurgence of power. Uh, though wounded from your capture, I'm going to pull ahead and say that Clank has a total HP out of 57 of, say, 35. Uh, and you should be able to control his token throughout combat as well as yours. Um, as you equip yourself with your weapons and such, uh, the echoes coming from the chamber uh, to the south uh, grow louder as you hear the skittering like rat paws upon metal of these awful intellect devourers and the shadow of a levitating tall figure with writhing tentacles under its what would be its jaw and elongated head. Zin, your action. Uh, Zin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zin is also going to go to the table and equip himself. <laughs> Suppose that. And uh, Durak? Durak will move passing, trying to push his way from the short stuff. Um, he's gonna start raging. Um, you see, like, the pains of his body start like, to get thick, his eyes go wide, and uh, you start hearing hot whispers in the, in the air. As those ghost can apparitions I... around you become more like solid, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, can I attack on this round? Or you have one action, so you may use it for whatever you want, yes. Movement yeah, action. I'll... Yeah. yeah, he will run to these guys and recklessly he will attack uh, the intellect. Oh. Okay, or not. <laughs> oh, the, uh, sorry, I thought you were attacking the bat and I was going to flavor them being the stuff. So you meet them just as they come into the chamber past the aperture door? You're just meeting yeah. them cleaving in? Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. With that being said, uh, if you guys are familiar with Rule 20, Jeff, I believe you, you're fine with Rule Initiative uh, in Rule 20 while you have your DD Beyond open? Yeah? Okay. Yes. So let's do that. We're going to go ahead and roll into Initiative. You see, uh, the first figure to enter, familiar to some of you, is that um, figure armored in what looks to be like a, almost like a latex rubber set of armor covering its face and eyes. Um, in its grasp, it caresses like a cat one of the intellect hours and then drops it to the floor to skitter along its side. It is hovering about maybe three feet off the ground. It, flanking it and taking a wide sort of arc to flank the rest of the group is another of those illithids with like... I would say like eight eyes on each side of his face and uh, writhing tentacles all throughout and a crystal-like blade made of some emerald gemstone that has been sharpened to a razor edge. It glows with this uh, malicious uh, aura. Um, as they enter the room, you can feel that necrotic cold grasp upon your bodies, that same blessing of Orcus upon them that curses your bodies. Remember that while there are in the chamber, just like before, uh, you, when you're within the, their aura, you suffer one of the demonic boons of Orcus, the aura of death, causing your uh, death saving throws to be at disadvantage while you're near them. So take heed and be careful. Um, we are going to go ahead and roll initiative for these guys one by one. And then put on some combat music and let's get this party started. Fuck yes. Time for revenge. 
As you quickly move to action, and uh, very thematically, we have Durak and Bajrak sharing initiative at the very top. Um, I guess we'll start with Bajrak. Okay. Um. All right, cuz, get your things, let's go. And then, uh, looking over at the, you know, I want to go for this big old squid guy here. Mm -hmm. I don't like your face as he points to him. How about I liberate? Excuse me. Sorry. Natural one intimidance. Intimidation. Mm -hmm. How about I liberate your head from your shoulders? And then, as a bonus action, uh, I'm going to go feral and go into my lycanthropy form. And you should be able to do so by right clicking it. Yeah, exactly. Yep. There you go. Got that. And then this says as force tunnel charge for. Oh, no, it's, excuse me. It's a class action. Uh, no, let's just go in five, mm -hmm. ten. Come around here. Dead sprinting, just moving so fast. Um, I'm going to use my attack action and go with the claws. Go for it. And I just renamed them as Twilight Razors. That sounds like a pony. 23. <laughs> Sorry. Sure. <laughs> Twilight Razor, like an emo pony. Uh, 23 strikes true through its uh, carapace armor. For six slashing damage. Yeah, we'll just do that. And then from there. Ah, fuck it. Because I have the mobile feet and I, and I made an attack and he can't react. take opportunity mm -hmm. attacks against. Yeah, he can't react. Um, I'll come here. Maybe try to get a little bit of a flank on him, possibly. I'm like, come on, come at me. Sounds no, good. good. That's my turn. As he sort of, with one of his single, like, brushes aside some of the chunks that have flown off his carapace armor uh, and takes a, a confident battle stance, we have Durak to follow up with your. Um, you said that you were doing a reckless attack upon this uh, mind player here. The... Yeah. Like one of the, against the, the bowers? Intellect to the bowers, yeah. Sounds good. So, uh, should I roll again or take the old rules? No, take whatever you roll first. Okay. We're just uh, acting in those, initiative, yeah. A 9 doesn't hit, I guess. Uh, but a 20 will. Uh, so, total 22 is slashing damage. You destroy, squishing the end, cleaving through it in half as the two parts uh, lay there motionless, quivering for a moment before laxing. Uh, you have destroyed one of these mind of ours. A smart move, knowing what they are capable of. Yeah, um, as I'm... It should be the other token. But don't worry, say, on the other side of the room, another spirit of an another drug were extremely familiar. My uncle, <laughs> Burak. <laughs> <laughs> appears and he smashed the other one. I'm using action search. Uh, do I need to hit? Or no, sorry. Uh, 16 to hit. 16 or just 19. meets. <laughs> striking through that psionic shield that he has surrounded himself. You see a brief purple spark as your weapon cleaves through and meets flesh. Total of 19 damage? Yeah. Is the intellect devourer alive? This one? Yes. Yes, alive. Alright, okay. Then I go for a, a second swing normally. No 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 great what uh, no great weapon master. Okay. Uh, so it will be uh twenty-five. Strikes and, and I believe if unless you somehow roll less than two damage, will destroy the second mind flare into a devour, sparing you. A consumption of the brains encounter again. <laughs> yeah, I was not gonna go for it. Uh, and that's it for me. You hear a voice, a different voice, reverberate through your minds, thick and malicious and slimy. It's right now that we have such great plans for you. Return to your vats. Succumb. Kneel. And as he speaks, he begins to level it higher as this Mind Flare over yonder uh, is going to go ahead and take his turn. Uh, we have him. Let me see here. Dive uh, at you, Durak, here with his tentacles forth. 
attempting to strike with a 12. 24. I'm recklessly attacking, so it hits. Right, I have advantage. Okay. Uh, striking you for 12. Seven second damage as the tentacles wrap around your head, trying to gain um, grasp on you. You are grappled. Yes. And please make me a DC 15 uh, intelligence saving throw, please. Against the effect of the stun. Let me check something fast. 17. Sure thing. So merely grappled in place there in his grasp as he bestially enwraps you in his tentacles. The crystal blade Sion beside him takes a stance to defend his brethren as he steps forth. Like so, uh, and attacks Bajarak with his crystal blade. One with his crystal blade launcher, or sure thing. So that's going to be a strike against Bajarak for 24 to hit, uh, piercing through Ooh, your is. armor for nine slashing damage plus five radiant. <laughs> okay. And as he. Uh, inspects the blade, red, crimson, with some of your blood. Uh, you can feel the susurration of laughter as he psionically pushes forth his very mind in a disorienting blast forward. This is going to be against Bajarak, Zin, and uh, Gizmo as well. The Mind Flayer magically emits a wave of psychic dissonance in a 60 foot cone in front of it. Please make me a DC 15 intelligence saving throw each of you guys, please. Okay, as he's preparing to do that, uh, he feels a, a sword going through his back as a uh, sentinel. Uh, oof, I was hoping for a, a nat 20. Uh, 15 to hit? It strikes through the carapace breastplate. Uh, 19, okay. 19. Nice! Natural 20 from Zin. Bad Rack rolling a 13 before she fails, and then we have. We're still waiting for. Uh, what did you roll there? I guess you're rolling in DD uh, Beyond for your intelligence intro, uh, Gizmo? 26. Nice. Ah. <clears throat> Alrighty then. So, on a failed saving throw, the creature takes this, uh, the damage that I put in chat. Uh, Psychic damage until the end of its next turn, the creature makes an attack roll or an ability check with a d8 penalty. Just sort of like Bane. Uh, I'm improving th about stun. I wasn't a fan of you guys just missing turns altogether. Um, those of you succeeded, the creature takes only half the damage listed and with no additional effects. So the damage I rolled there was 18. 18 for those who failed, 9 for those who succeeded. Uh, psychic damage. Question though. Of course. Um, this is an intelligence saving throw, but is this a charm or a stun effect? You said it, it was a stun? It's a stun effect. Okay, then we have psionic fortitude as Dorgar, and then we get a um, oh, an advantage on the saving throw. Go for it. Dwegar Two, never shaped. mind. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Just your luck continues. Uh, Dwegar has been shocked exactly. to resist the uh, illithids. <laughs> but... It's the fact that you get disadvantage for the tadpole, so it's only regular. Because I have gnomish magic resistance, so I have advantage Ooh, on that's the right. saving throw. Too, yeah, I keep so. forgetting we have the tadpole. Yep, no, never mind. 13 and, still. And just as the psionic wave lashes forth, then a cleave from behind his back lashes on his shoulder, digs in deep, wounding the creature as your sentinel strike there uh, embeds deep, Durak. Uh, with that all out of the way, we have Gizmo to take initiative. Jesus Christ, I'm <laughs> fucked up already. <laughs> Come on. We're back. We're <laughs> Guys, give, Giz give Gizmo the floor. Right, you, you, you see the little gnome clad only in his uh, undergarments, still dripping wet from the viscous fluids in the vat. He's, he waves his, his steam-powered warhammer above his head and charges forward without concern for himself. Using both hands on this versatile weapon, he takes two swings at this, the dude with the green blade. And that is, he says, come to daddy. <laughs> as, he, as he rolls his oh, oh. He swings with big daddy. Oh, big swings. Plus, plus 11, shit. 
Yeah, level 10, man. Uh, both hits. <laughs> uh, give me that total damage there. So he was using it two handed, so that is 29 points of magical bludgeoning damage. The creature is bloodied. When I say bloodied, that means it has less than 50% of its HP as it recoils from the swing. You can see this silvery blood coat your weapon and its carapace breastplate now, and uh, bruises spread blackened across its flesh. Oof, oof, oof for me. Um, for his bonus mm -hmm. action, Gizmo is going to l turn his head over his shoulder and say, You bucket the bolts! Get up here and fight! Commanding his companion, Clank, to engage with the enemy. Gdush, 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 as Clank approaches and uses his uh, kind of whole body rotates as one hand takes a wipe at the same target, the Illithid with the green blade. And let's see, I gotta get the swing on this. The... And he does not have advantage, so that would be a 13. Unfortunate. Still recoiling from your two, um... Uh, uh, hits there. Uh, Butcher Clank is still powering up his dex, so that will not deal any damage, but a good attempt nonetheless. That will be my turn. Webs in initiative. Um, then. So, then seeing that. Full frontal assault going on. He's going to do, 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 swing over here and get a more direct line to this creature here. And you'll see him just kind of look like he fills his cheek almost out of nowhere. And then he just does like a with his hand covering his mouth and a fist and then just kind of goes straight. Oh, the guitar poison spray which is a content fail so he should take 22 poison damage i would like to do this <laughs> um so you just see it and you just go and the poison sprays across all of the different eyes, or supposed eyes of this creature, and they just start to melt. That's the creature is destroyed. That would be the end of your uh, turn. We have back at the, the top of the initiative. Um. Yep. Uh, so as he looks over and the enemy falls ahead of him, he just like slinks him over, just steps over, and he goes, "More fresh meat." and goes for the other guy here and he is going to get a lot of attacks coming his way um first we're gonna go with two claw attacks uh twilight razors uh a 15 strikes and, and strikes. A 21 cool one of those strikes i'm gonna use a key point and i'll go for a stun it's a con save dc 17. Fourteen. Now he fails. That motherfucker stunned. Nice. Um, um, and then, mm -hmm. as a bonus action, just to be safe, hopefully I can just get this guy down. But I just want to secure it. Uh, I'm gonna go for two. I'm gonna use a fury of blows, and then we'll do two offhand strikes. And then I'm just gonna go for some big old swinging punches here. Hell yeah. Remember, we have an advantage. Yes. That one I already got a 27, so I won't roll, but I'll do the other one, though, too. 26. Oh. oh. You have so an uh, advantage, so so roll dice one more time. You're fishing for natural 20s here. Yeah, I did. I already got a natural 20 on the first one. Uh-huh. And the one that's Yeah. Yeah, the second one was a 15 and a 26. Nice. Sorry, I already rolled the first one, but... 
Uh, so you're sure. gonna have seven. That's twelve. Is it a twenty? Yeah, I'm assuming it's twenty-six hits. So that's six, six. That's twelve plus seven, nineteen. Um, bludgeoning damage. Nineteen bludgeoning damage. Against the stun creature. As you guys pile on, we have to do rock initiative. Okay. I, me and my uncle Barack and my cousin, I start hammering on this guy, like pushing it with her legs and swinging the swords. So uh, I reckon both hits. It's an 18 and a 17. A total 21, 31, 45 slashing damage. <laughs> Level 10. I should expect as much. Yeah, that's lethal. You can describe oh, your kill. That's lethal. Yeah, as the first cut appears in his body, he looks around slowly and he sees, Oh, we are not the only people here. There are plenty of spirits surrounding my Alice, protecting them. Uh, so then he gets swung on the back and perish. Moment of silence spreads throughout this chamber as the last of the blows echoes onwards. You get a moment of respite. You look around. Take it away, guys. The stage is yours. I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, when we leveled up, did we re did I regain my spell slots, or am I still with the spell slots I had left? Since being long? captured, you've benefited from a full long rest. <laughs> Within the vats. <laughs> We shall start moving. The, the more I'm coming. And I, I, I could. Move. Before we start moving, Zin kind of looks around and just like, and he spots Gizmo and he's like, you're, you're new here. Were you in one of the other vats? Yes, uh, I don't know uh, who you are, but uh, yes, I, I must have been taken by these. These are creatures. I, I woke up in the vat uh, next to you, I believe, or, or no, it was um, the furry one there, I think. Oh, I don't know. Um, yes, but uh, I assume since we're all prisoners that now we're all friends, he says questioningly. Zin just kind of keeps walking up to him, kind of almost getting in his personal bubble, and just like reaches for his hand, grabs it, and gives it like a very fierce shake, and like with a big grin on his face, just like, well, welcome to the group. My name is Zin. Don't mind these Dwego over here. They're a bit rough around the edges, but they're okay. To Gizmo. Careful with that one. <laughs> I'm still recovering from the pain he did. <laughs> And then he just kind of looks over, he looks over to Durak and then he's like, Man, you know that wasn't my fault. I got charm. <laughs> Gizmo will just kind of look from one to the other back and uh, feebly return the handshake. Yes, uh, well met, uh, my good man. Uh, uh, Clank, uh, fetch the rest of my gear. My bag. I have to make sure all my things are here. And he's going to wander over and start rummaging through um, to make sure that all of his items can be located in his various backpacks and bags and belts and tool belts, etc. Could you find uh, Anyone who takes up arms against these old squid faces, that is a friend of mine. Name's Boz. And he gives a big old grin, and you start to see the teeth, obviously, uh, being his big, uh, large incisors or uh, his cuspids. Um, but as he's like, he's giving you his handshake, he just starts to cool down a little bit, and he starts to shrink down about another foot. And as he returns down to his uh, Dwegar form, that's uh, quite a quite a skill you have there, uh, sir. Uh... You all are from the Underdark? Aye. Pounds his chest real fucking hard. Right from Gracklestook. Born and raised. Natural warriors. One of the best in the lands. This here is my cause. Points to Durak. Howdy. Are you from these lands or you came from the surface? 
Are you soft? That's the question. I don't know about soft, he says, kind of trying to modestly cover up his virtual nakedness uh, while he puts <laughs> straps on tool belts and so forth. He goes, but uh, yes, uh, I am from at the surface. Uh, and then he, he kind of puffs up his chest and steps forward and puts out his hand. I'm uh, Professor Gizmo Gadgetoni. Uh, I am uh, formerly of the great the library of Candlekeep. I was uh, on, a, on a trip of sorts when uh, I was, uh, shall we say, uh, abducted, I guess. Uh, I have uh, had the displeasure of serving as a as a tutor to someone in Gracklestug for a good long time. Uh, how I wound up here, though, I have no recollection, as he looks around, completely unfamiliar with the environment. But uh, no. this is uh, my companion, Clank. Uh, his uh, companion uh, servant uh, experiment of mine. Uh, he uh, is a generally uh, agreeable a fellow. Clank, uh, say hello to the good people. And, and you'll see the, the entire body rotate 30 degrees or so. Uh, a single red glowing light, just kind of like serving for an eyeball, just looking in your direction. No voice, nothing. And it will just lift a hand and kind of mock at a wave. And that will be Clank's greeting. All right, I gotta get me one of them, cuz they don't back talk you like them slaves we got. Oh, All right, gosh. pretty nice. I like it. Why don't you chum along with us? Who could use an extra hand? Got a little bit of a well, a little bit of a pickle, I guess you could say earlier. But these bastards hit us hard, but we're gonna come back and hit them harder. I assume we're uh, trying to get out of here. Uh, that. Did you all hear someone speaking in your brains while we were in the vat? No? Never mind, uh, I didn't hear it either. The uh, man was using a lot of big words. I don't understand that. Ugh. Anyways, I'm gonna find him one way or another. But yeah, we're getting out of here. But not before we finish business. Yeah. You now have the pleasure to destroy one of these colonies. Welcome to the crew. Um, Tom, is this sword uh, lootable? I'm checking. Just on the floor and you can pick it up, yeah? Yeah, I'll take it. I don't know. So it look, looks magical, so I'll, I'll take it. The crystal blade is looks to be made from solid emerald, jagged and sharpened at the edges. Uh, it emits a glow bright enough to shed like 30 feet in front of you, brightly. And you can hear a steady, like, sort of thrumming hum coming from it, as if it's indeed channeling some sort of a, either magical or psionic power through it. I don't think that the mm-hmm. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. You weren't finished? No, I was going to say, like, I swing into one of the bodies trying to practice, like, if I can see any properties when I cut. Experimenting with it, uh, you feel uh, it try to interact with the now dead body that does not uh, resonate any of that foul aura that you says from it or um, any brain waves or anything. So there's little interaction with the dead, but it seems to reach out hungrily, trying to sap away at some of their essence, just not reaching for anything at this dead body. Is it a great sword? It's a long sword. Crystal long long sword blade. Okay. Continue, Max. He looked around the room and then he looked to the the next doorway and he's like, though these look familiar from when we previously entered that room, I don't think we should take chances again that there might not be others in there. So maybe we should go with a little bit of caution. And with that, he... um, summons a wild companion, or uses his wild wild companion to summon a familiar, so he summons this little, um, fey fighter. Um, and then he 
when the spider appears on on his hand that he has outstretched. He says, he says, welcome. I know this isn't the best time for, uh, for, or we're not in the best situation here, but I could really use your help. And he looks at his companions and just like, if you guys are, if you guys are on board with having a little bit of patience, we should send my friend here into the next room to scout for us. So we're not walking into an am, well, not an ambush, but well, I guess it was because all those mag players came out of nowhere. Um, an ambush again. So Gizmo uh, completely distracted by whatever happens to be floating in the vat over here did not hear a single word just said. He's just staring at whatever is floating in the vat and tapping on the vat like he's trying to get its attention. Would you like me to would you like to roll an arcana check to try to identify the creature within the vat? Sure. The C for it will be 10, plus whatever its challenge rating is for a total of 15. The creature is alien to you, though you can spot the obvious. It looks like some, some sort of a beholder, like a creature of legend that you might have read about or even encountered in your time, uh, adventuring throughout Forgotten Realms. It looks to be uh, stunned in its condition in the vat within this brine pool, and has been altered somehow. Its uh, flesh melted at spots to reveal raw muscle beneath, and a blind eye stares uh, half-closed at you. Uh, though, uh, at this distance, you can feel up say, reverberation coming from it. A susurration, almost like a white noise at the back of your mind sourced from this creature. Is uh, this uh, one a friend of yours? Anybody you know here? Not that one. I don't know that thing. Oh, I stop tapping on the glass. You're going to wake him up and gain his ire. As he's starting to get his uh, tools and the gun that he found, puts it in his hip. Um, starts just tucking away all his stuff. Gizmo, being an artifice yourself, you spot an interface at the bottom of his vat, a sort of a console, if you will. One of the biggest buttons seems to be, uh, what you would guess, uh, a release mechanism, uh, should you wish to drain the vat and open the glass. Uh, otherwise, the other purposes of the console are bizarre and alien to you, but you might guess that there are to monitor vitals and such, and any changes of this creature uh, as it undergoes what is body-altering seramorphosis. Well, if he's not a friend of yours, uh, I'm not so sure it's a good idea to let him out. Uh, what do you think? Aye, right, leave him be. <laughs> Dumb bastard got caught in there. Can't find a way out. <laughs> You're so unga, so unga bunga, buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sucks. Hey, man, get some raw power. Yeah. No, I guess. <laughs> the friends. This guy was trapped in there and got saved by a voice in his head. I am the chosen one, <laughs> or we're all chosen. Uh, he would have let him out. What about this one? Do you know him? Creature from now, some of you guys are even to Yeah, quag off by the looks of it with four arms and exposed brain. Oh, nah. He looks like Too he's ugly. seen the better days. I don't know the chap. Perhaps I we should. That. Have... <laughs> Go ahead. Perhaps we should just prepare ourselves. Uh, Clank, did you get to the rest of my things? My backpack, the backpack, man. Get the backpack. <laughs> yeah, like, snap, snapshot to uh, Clank just playing with the lid of the, the chest back and forth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Precisely. Yep. Yeah. You gather your things, arm yourselves. The way ahead lies to the north and to the south, the north being where the original group came from. The over map is thus. I shall uh, zoom you guys into your current position over yonder, and this is where we are. Ooh. Double. We're on this map twice. Oh, my apologies. I did zoom you into your current position, though. So 
Zinn kind of turns back to Gizmo and just like, we've been to the north and to the south. To the south is where we were ambushed and where I presume we lost. Well, we lost, we ended up in these vats. Um, so if we move to the south, we should definitely take precautions, which is why I've summoned my little friend here and he points back out to, to the, in the palm of his hand, a uh, long-legged black spider. Um, with a small blue dot on, um, on his back, almost like an eye. I suggest that my friend maybe scout ahead for us so we don't meet the same fate again. Do you have Hi. a way of uh, communicating with uh, your friend? I do. Oh, then that sounds like a very good idea to me. Clanka, you stay here right in front of me. <laughs> well, make him go. Sure. Perfect. So, um, Zin kind of uh, concentrates, and you can't, he says it out loud, but he also uses his telekinesis um, to communicate with the little spider. Telepathy? And it to... Sorry, Sorry, not to, I'm um, actually, just telekinesis is the whole like push pull thing, and then telepathy is the. Yeah. Yeah, in fine yeah. familiar it's telepathy. Cool. Um I, I have Yep. Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> Big stab block, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um and and basically communicates with the spider too. Venture forth into the next room and um uses an action to um be able to see and hear through his spider's eyes. Mm. So you guys see Zin's eyes sort of glaze over white and a little bit of moss spreads around the eyes as uh, there's a certain magical shine for a moment around the spider's many eyes. And Megan, your characters can now see from the perspective of the floor, maybe like an inch off of it, onto these five giants surrounding you, the vats throughout, and uh, through the spider's senses you can feel the reverberations of machinery and electricity in the floor. Um, and scouting ahead, uh, you, if you would turn over a corner there, you would see the same five foot diameter of like sort of um, tunnel with a vertical shaft further along it. Um, the shaft, as you remember it, descends down like 20 feet to a chambers below. Beyond it, down the hallway around the corner, would be uh, a solid wall of force, glowing pink and purple with energy and crackling, uh, with various organic looking veiny tubes sort of uh, cascading out of uh, the edges of this force field uh, through the walls and down into the basement dwellings of this ship or facility you find yourselves in uh the wall of force is blocking the way forward but just beyond its semi-translucent uh, face you can see a large brine pool within which rests a giant um brain with black tentacles writhing throughout the brain itself pallid and white and pale and with a sickly green aura around it and a symbol demonic in nature and wicked looking almost branded magically upon its very center. Is there anything else you wish to do? Uh, communicate all of that. Once, once you would tip her down again, you'd see him kind of take a pause and, and provide description. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Gizmo still obsessing about... Uh, his gear keeps padding his pockets and tightening his buckles and adjusting his tool belt. Uh, you, you see him reach into a worn leather physician's bag like like doctors used to carry in the 1800s. And he pulls out a roll of silvery tape. And he pulls off a strip, applies it to Clank, and that's his method of casting mending. Mending, yeah. Restore hit points. Uh, to his uh, steel defender. Let me know how many hit points you restore with that uh, spell. And as you're rummaging through your gear, the gear in the box stuff, you find something curious, sort of almost hidden by this cartilaginous chest. Um, 
is what looks to be like a lever with indents along the shaft of the handle meant for like a spiraling like tentacle to ride around grasp and either pull or push it right now the leather is set in an up position uh, from the, this lever uh, various tubes uh, carrying forth uh, either psionic or like electric energy connect to each of the vats via like an arc in the ceiling there are odd looking writings uh, along the bottom of the lever in that uh, weird braille-like language of the illithids, um, four staccatoed lines with breaks in between them, like uh, kind of like reading Morse code. They're vertical and drawn down. As your steel defender heals for seven hit points. Hey, uh, what do you think of that? Is uh, up there? It's Gizmo points. You are looking at all these things. Well, I don't know. I don't really understand the mechanics of it all. Why don't yeah. you go ahead and give it a little bit of a, a nudge? You're you a uh, professor, after all. You tell us. If it means nothing else coming out of these vats, I shut it down. 